Okay, so welcome back to another big week, uh, bit week tutorial. And on this one, we need to talk about uh, the pitch 12. It's going to be a modulator. So I'm using a synthesizer right here. And this is the sound I'm using. And this is the MIDI I'm using. It's just, you know, a chord. Right, so pretty simple, right? So I'm going to go and bring the pitch 12. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to do pitch 12. So by, this is a very simple modulator. I feel like I don't even need to do a video on this one, but I'm doing a video on everything. So yeah, why not? So by default, when you bring it, it's going to be a per voice. So it means that you're sustaining uh, chords. It means that, you know, you're going to get one voice for each key. So in this case, I'm going to disable because it's going to be a little bit easier to understand. So, okay. So by default, what it does is going to recognize whatever pitch you're doing, you know, C, E, G, A, in this case, it's going to show you right here and it will give you a modulator for that specific key. Now, if you are starting and you don't know what, you know, what, uh, what the keys are, because again, you're starting uh, in the left, on the left side, whenever you select the, the device, the modulator, it's going to tell, you know, A, C, whatever, whatever, whatever. So the trick right here is that when you uh, a, a note is being recognized, you can run a modulation on that particular note. So I'm going to go right here. It's going to be a pretty, you know, a pretty simple sound. So this is C, right? So I'm going to do and say that every time that we get the C note is going to do a modulation, it's going to go high on the filter. That's why we only hear the C with high frequencies. So of course, right here at the bottom, you have uh, some other controls like the uh, amount of how much you're doing. And right now we are going from zero to 100%, right? That's how much we are doing. So you can go and do a little bit less. That's, you know, what it means. And then you have the lag. So the lag is pretty simple. Right now it's going from zero to 100% and it's going, you know, all the way up. And it's pretty harsh, you know? But maybe you want kind of a transition, you want to slowly go up to 100%. So this is going to be the lag. Notice it's just taking a little bit more time. It's just a little bit, it's a little bit smoother. It's kind of a smooth uh, transition. Now notice that the lag, it depends on how long you're sustaining this chord or this key in this case. So if you go uh, too much, you will have no time, you know, to go up. So, this, so think of this uh, as the attack, let's say, attack of a compressor. All right. All right, so pretty simple. So this means that when you're going, do, you do C, you're going to go here. But maybe when you go to E, you want to do a little bit less. And maybe when you go to the other keys, you want to do maybe a little bit more. And now you're starting to get, you know, a much more complex sound because the different keys will have a different motion. And this is, you know, why you would use this device. It's pretty cool. It's just a pretty usable device. Okay. Pretty simple. So now, of course, right now we are doing a very dumb uh, kind of a MIDI right here. So, of course, I'm going to go and bring something else. I'm going to bring a different, you know, a different ARP. So I'm going to go right here and just play it. And I'm going to go to the device and just pretty much reset all the modulation so we can start over. So now we have something a bit more complex. And notice that right here, we start an octave and then we just go to different chord, but it's a little bit lower, right? So right here, we can just target different keys and, you know, just get a different, a different feel. So for example, on this C that sounds on the second part of this clip, I'm going to go I'm going to do something else and we're going to get one sound for the everything else and then get something different. And you know, we can do this with whatever we want. And we can even go crazy on this one because maybe I'm going to go and just do a little bit of sync, you know. Pretty complex sound, which is a very dumb device. Right, so that's it. You know, it's just a pretty simple device. This is what you can do. You can just target different notes 
and then do run a modulation on each different key. All right. So of course, uh, if you're playing C on different octaves, this is cannot recognize what octave you're doing. So you're gonna need to, of course, target all the Cs, for example, all the same keys on different octaves to the same modulation. Uh, but well, you know, it's still it's still very useful. So another thing uh, that you get is the per voice with this one. And this is something that you get with pretty much any single device. So right now I'm gonna do pretty much what we we're, we're doing right here, but I'm gonna be sustaining the lower C. I'm gonna go to the device and I'm gonna remove all the modulations. I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna go there, and I'm gonna pretty much start over. Right. So notice we are sustaining the lower C, right? This one. So what I can do, I can go low on this one. I'm gonna say that the C that we are sustaining is gonna be sustained. But maybe I want to do something else with the other one, so I'm gonna go and change it to per voice, and it's gonna sound a little bit different right from the start. The C that is sustaining is going up, and notice that as soon as we get other keys, the uh, reference right here is gonna change the C sustaining all the way up. But the other ones are just not gonna do the same thing. And it's because whenever you do a uh, per voice, every single voice has, has its own kind of a filter motion. That it gets it, uh, you know, its own filter. This key is following uh, one instruction would, would, for the filter, the other one is, is following a different one. And that's what happens with per, the per voice. You just, you know, kind of a assigned different motions or different filters in this case uh, to each of the voices, right? Okay, so that's it. Now, of course, if you change this, how this works, and you disable the per voice, it's gonna sound very different. Right? Super different. So you always need to bear in mind what you want to do if you're sustaining notes, or, you know, again, just, you know, you need to decide what you want right here. Okay, so that's it. You know, it's, that's the whole device. So hopefully you learned something on this one. Remember to like the video and subscribe, and uh, check Patreon, of course. So see you on the next one.